Jimmy the K here with another installment of Yet the Name that you hear every Saturday, the Jimmy the K Sports Show. I'm glad that you're visiting us this week. Remember, if you want to submit questions, you can submit them live here on Ustream. To the right, you see a menu bar where you can scroll down and go to the chat window there and ask any questions that you have sports related and and I'll give them consideration for either this week's or next week's or a future show. I, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you for viewing this week and every week. Let's get into some of the sports news. We're going to start off with something that I posted on the All About Sports Zone Facebook page. We've got a few new uh, likes over there at the All About Sports Zone page. So it's to the new people, our hats off are to you and and uh, we, we're glad to have you and look forward to seeing you here each and every week with the uh, Jimmy the K Sports Show. But uh, what I really wanted to get into was, like I said, something that I posted on the All About Sports Zone Facebook page with the comment that Ian Kinsler made earlier this week about the fact that he was mad at the Texas Rangers for trading him the way that he did and wanted them to go O and 162. <clears throat> that never happens in baseball, by the way, ever. You can be the crappiest team in baseball, you're still not going to go 0 and 162. But I wanted to delve into this and give you my opinion of, of how I feel, you know, Ian Kinsler is taking this. Kinsler is a competitor. I totally understand. When you're a competitor, you're going to say things sometimes that you're going to regret saying. But the truth of the matter is, Kinsler said it. And what's even worse is, you know, some of the stuff that he said during the interview just didn't make sense. He said um, that the Texas Rangers front office approached me about being a, uh, a leader in the clubhouse, being a mentor to the younger players. And he says, in quotes, literally, Ian Kinsler said this in quotes. And if Ian Kinsler's got the, the nads to, to come on this show and, and prove me wrong, I'd love to have him. Um, he says, and I quote, that's not my job. My job is not to mentor these young players. It's to come in here each and every day and play the game that I love. But yet, in that same sentence, he talks about Michael Young being a mentor and leader to him. His premise made no sense. You know, he's he's been traded to a team in Detroit, and well, where his numbers won't be near as good as what they were in Texas. He was constantly a 30-30 guy, 30 home runs, 30 stolen bases in Detroit. With the configuration of that ballpark, Co Comerica Park, he's not going to be a 30 30 type person. He'll be lucky to make it 20 and 30, you know. With the configuration of that park, he's just not going to be. But he even stated that he's happy to be in Detroit. He's got, he's got people on that team. It's Miggy's team, Miguel Cabrera, it's uh, uh, Justin Verlander's team. And he can just do what he loves. And let's play the game of baseball. But, you know, I want to read the exact quote that Ian Kinsler said. And I, I, I won't use the exact quote because there's some explicatives in here. And I know there's some younger kids on here that, that, that have viewed this show, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to use explicatives, plain and simple as that. But, well, we'll, we'll use other words. Uh, this is his quote. He says, I hope they go 0-162. Kinsler is, is telling this ESPN Magazine's Robert Sanchez. He goes, I got friends, and I love my friends, but I hope they lose their butts. Of course, that's not the exact language that he used, but hey, you can get the gist. Of course, Ron Washington, the head man, the head honcho, the manager over at the Texas Rangers, <laughs> just kind of 
chalked this up to laughter and says, we won't go one or Owen 162 guaranteed. So you know my question is, is this going to be a motivator for the Rangers or is this going to be a, a negative for the Texas Rangers? So you know, you've got Kinsler bad mouthing his former team, even though he says he's still got friends over there. So, do you tell him that, you know, they're still your friends, but yet you bad mouth them? It's, 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 it's kind of iffy in a way as to say, you know, Kinsler still loves this team. You know, honestly, when push comes to shove, I think he was just mad about the fact that the way he got the trade news. The trade news actually didn't come out the way he wanted it. It didn't come out. And Jan, John Daniels actively admitted this, saying that trade rumors, or, or the trade didn't come out the way that he wanted it. What happened was uh, Elvis Andrus, Adrian Beltre, and in Kinsler's families were all together in the in Hawaii when all this was going through. John Daniels, you know, gets the gets the word that Filder, you know, is going to take the deal, whatever. And um, so somehow Kinsler gets the news before it's leaked. You know, before anyone knows anything's going on. Kinsler did like that. When the trade went through, John Daniels left a message and admittingly, Ian Kinsler said, I didn't repeat his, or, or I didn't return his blanket message. Plain and simple as that. I don't like the guy. He's a snake. He, uh, he pushed out Nolan Ryan, and you know, that's a, that's another thing. Now, now players are, are starting to come out of the woodwork that were, we're here during the team's two World Series appearances and saying, you know, maybe Nolan was pushed out. You, you know, they're starting they're starting to back up the fact that, you know, us fans knew all along that he was pushed out. So, I mean, I have to agree with Kinsler on that part. You know, he... You know, Kinsler knows that front office and knows that team a lot better than I do. And so I can't go against that. What I can go against is the fact that Ian Kinsler is a ball player. He's very competitive. I understand, you know, that he is competitive and that he's got that drive to win every game. But, you know, to come out and say, I hope my friends lose their butts and go, oh, and 162 is short of being, dare I say, childish. You know, Kinsler gets asked by a sports writer. Of course, he's, he's going to speak his mind, plain and simple as that. Uh, you know, of course, Kinsler, a couple of days after this comes out, has started to kind of backslide and got time to retract his story and say, hey, that's not exactly what I said. You know, uh, you know, some of the stuff that I said, maybe I didn't mean to say, but, you know, I said them and I, you know, they, they were kind of childish. You all, yes, they were. They were childish. And, you know, it's about time you, you put up and shut up. This is a game. You know, the, the biggest thing now is when you come to town in June against your former club, the Texas Rangers, the amounts of booze that you're going to get. Can you man up and do better than your boy Josh Hamilton every time he's booed? You know, Josh Hamilton, when he was with Texas, was a lights-out player. You know, he gets traded to Anaheim and starts getting booed. He can't perform. He's not a performer. He, he's he's not he's not a stud, as I like to say. He's not a ball player stud. He's a dud. He, he's 
He's an Alex Rodriguez. You know, he's a one-time wonder. So, Kinsler, how about this? How about you come join my show? Come man up. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, why, why don't you come here and, and come on the show? We'll, we'll do a Google Hangout, you know, where people can see you and me chatting. And um, we'll get your side of the story. I always want to get everyone's side of the story. But the truth of the matter is, from what I've read and what I've seen, what you've said is downright childish. Plain and simple as that. The Rangers are not going 0-162. And I have to agree with Washington, guaranteed. So, that's that. Here, here's something to go along with that. This is actually pretty funny in a way. Salta Lamacchia, former Texas Ranger, and uh, he played for the Boston Red Sox last year on the World Series team. He's now a Florida, uh, not a, yeah, a Miami Marlin. A Florida Marlin. A Miami Marlin. He comes out and, uh, kind of takes a shot at Ian Kinsler in a way. And, the, you know, he's, he says, when asked about uh, the Boston Red Sox, he says, in, a, in a, a, a sly, sneakily type way, he goes, I hope they go 0-162. Now they're all sleaze balls. Of course, he said it with a smile on his face, which is kind of funny. And all this is is a shot at, at uh, Ian Kinsler's comment about John Daniels and their front office and the way they did things. You know, in some ways, it's kind of funny to see other players take shots at other players. You know, it's to see Salta Lamacchia do that to a former teammate is just is priceless. It's very, very priceless. I want to definitely look at a few questions that we got via email this week. I want to look at a question that we got from a, a guy in uh, Cedar Hill, Texas. His name is, is uh, Martellus Bridicus. What a last name, Bridicus. Martellus Bridicus. He asked the question, he says, uh, choice is off to a solid start this spring. Do I think that the Rangers are going to add him for opening day? And I, you know, I, I, Martellus Bradicus, that's an excellent question. Excellent question. I honestly feel like that choice will be on the opening day roster. He could very well be a fourth outfielder. He could be a DH player. You know, the, the problem with Texas is, is finding a place for him to play. He's a young player. Either they can send him to AAA and let him develop over the years or over the next year and then call him up in September and let him play the outfield most of the time. Or they can let him come to the big leagues where he can play every position that he wants in DH and other places like that and it gets him in the club atmosphere. It gets him on the team, you know, but you know, it's all up to the Texas Rangers. I do think that he will be on the opening day roster. I really do. His numbers are pretty stout for spring training, but you have to realize this is spring training and you know, that, that brings me to another point of a, a lot of these, these, um, uh, these message boards that I'm reading about how bad the Texas Rangers pitching is so far this spring. Well, guys, you have to understand this is spring training. You know, we don't vamp things up until middle March, you know, maybe sometimes the end of March. I understand you, uh, you know, you want to see those guys go lights out and start from the spring and go all the way through October, but that's typically not the way it goes. The way it typically goes is the fact that, these guys start off really, 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 really slow. And when opening day gets here, that's when they know they need to be on guard. They need to be at their best. Conditioning needs to be where it needs to be. And they need to be able to pitch every five days. 
So this business that the Rangers are two and seven or, or two two wins, six losses, and one tie as of today, because the pitching staff it's not doing very well. You have to understand this team has nine starters in camp right now. Nine starters vying for five spots. Now, with nine starters vying for five spots, you're going to have to cut guys at times. You know, Tanner Shepherds is in the mix. You've got you've got uh, Robbie Ross in the mix. The Rangers just signed Joe Saunders to a pretty nice, you know, he, he could wind up with a million and a half dollars worth of money and incentives if he makes the major league club and hits those incentives. Joe Saunders is no no slouch either. Joe Saunders is a workhorse. He's it, with the exception of last season, Joe Saunders has had pretty stout seasons. His his pitching at the ballpark's not very good. One and seven with over an eight ERA. So what? You know, the truth of the matter is he's pitching for the good guys. He's not pitching for the bad guys. He's not going up against the lineup that the Rangers used to have either. So, with that being said, you know, y'all guys on these threads talking about how bad the Rangers pitching staff is right now and how bad the Rangers pitching staff is going to be this season is just not that good. You know, let's let's not worry about right now. Let's worry about March 31st when teams get to the nitty gritty. So, with that being said, it's spring training. Let's not get our hopes up. And if you look at it, some of the teams that finished in the playoffs last year, Boston won the World Series. Dead bottom. Uh, Los Angeles Dodgers. They're a pretty stout team. Kind of towards the bottom. So, you know, spring training really proves nothing. And if you look at it, the Yankees back decade, last decade, and when they were winning, you know, World Series left and right, their spring trainings were some of the worst in all of baseball. They were dead last in spring training. And most of those seasons that they won the World Series. So spring training means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So good question there. Want to get on to a couple more. Well, let's do a... Let's do one from a, a young man from, from Fort Worth, Linden. Do I think Alex Rios is going to have a good year this year for the Rangers? Well, I think that he'll have a better year this year than what he's had in years past or, or than what he had last year because the fact is he only spent two months after the trade deadline. He's going to have a full season here more than likely unless Texas decides to trade him here in a Rangers uniform. So he's going to be, he's been in the same clubhouse. He's been with the same guys. He's ready to rock and roll. So, yes, I think he's going to have a good year. Do I think he'll have a solid year? Yes. Do I think he'll probably have one of his best years in the majors? I actually do. I think that he'll actually have a his best year in the majors this year with the Rangers. I really do. So, you heard it first and here only here on the Jimmy the K Sports Show. So, you know. I, I, I'm used to eating crow sometimes, so if it doesn't happen, you come back and let me know about it, and I'll eat crow live here on the Jimmy the K Show. Is that what you want? Me to eat crow. Wow. Let's get on to a couple other sports news real quick. Um, I definitely want to take a look at something that Wade Phillips said about Jason Garrett, which is kind of a, <laughs> it's it's kind of hilarious in a way. Um, you know, Cowboys are officially under the cap, you know. You know, so. You know, there, there was a, a tweet 
that Phillips, uh, Wade Phillips, the former Dallas Cowboys coach, tweeted the other day on Twitter, which is kind of funny in a way. And it says this, Jason Garrett is tied with Wade Phillips for 56 games as the Dallas Cowboys head coach. Phillips 34 and 22, Garrett 29 and 27. Hashtag surprises me. <clears throat> you know, of course, Wade Phillips then has to retract himself and says, My surprise was that Jason and I had coached the same amount of games. Not the record. Time passes quickly. I'm, I wish Jason and the Cowboys well. You know, the truth of the matter is, Wade Phillips to be quite honest with you, is a little perturbed at the fact that he was let go by the Houston Texans. You know, that's that's where all this stems from. These guys get uh, on their high horses on the teams that they like, the teams that they hope to coach for, and they just can't get off those high horses. He coached the last few games for the Texans last year, Was had one win, you know, they went out and got some Penn State coach that, you know, I don't think will do a very, very good job for the Houston Texans. But, hey, you know, that's my opinion. You know, the Texans could get better. They could get worse. You never know. But it's actually kind of funny that, you know, Phillips is taking a shot at Garrett. He takes a shot at Romo. He takes a shot at everyone. But the truth of the matter is, the Cowboys are the Cowboys. The Cowboys owner, Jerry Jones, is Jerry Jones. And until he can back up and stop making the mistakes that he's made in years past, you know, the Cowboys will be the Cowboys, whether good or whether bad. You know, Wade Phillips needs to just back off, go look for another NFL team, go coach a peewee team in Houston, you know, just find something better to do than get on Twitter and uh, start knocking people. You know, that's idols, idol hands are the hands of a devil worshiper, I believe is an old saying, which I don't know, or, or idol hands. Are those of the devils? I can't remember how it goes. Something like that. But you know what I mean. So, tonight marks the night in which the Dallas Stars are re retiring the jersey of Mike Madonna. Number nine, Mike Madonna. The star of so many playoff wins, Stanley Cup wins back in the 90s. Good guy, him and Brett Hull. You know, tonight was the night in which the Stars are retiring his number. No other player in Stars history will ever, ever, ever wear Mike Madonna's number again and what do I have to say about that I have to say that's pretty doggone awesome why because you know for so many years I watched Mike Madonna take the stars to that next level Mike Madonna was with the uh, uh, Minnesota or Milwaukee. I can't remember which team it moved from. Moved to Dallas. You know, he got some core cool players around him. They built a team around him. And he became that elite player that people will always talk about. The elite player that, you know, you can walk up to on the street, talk to any day congratulate him for what he's done for that team and he'd smile at you and tell you you know it wasn't me it was a team effort Mike Madonna was that type of player he's that type of man 
and he's definitely going to be that type of coach someday in the NFL or NHL if they give him a position higher up anywhere in the NHL. Mike McDonald, a good man. Our hats go out to you, sir, for the great years that you spent with the Dallas Stars, for the great years that you've helped the Dallas community, for the great years that you've helped our vets, for the great years that you've helped, you know, the DFW community embrace the fact that hockey could be a sport in the city of Dallas. You know, it was Mike Madonna that took it upon himself coming here to Dallas to take the reins and be that player. Be that player that the is the the core type player that no matter what his legacy will live on from years and years and years and years to years past his death on. Mike Madonna, thank you so much for what you've done for this city. Thank you so much for what you've done for the community. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Plain and simple as that. You're a good man. We appreciate it. We congratulate you here at the Jimmy the K Sports Show. And wish you many, many more years of success in the hockey community, no matter how you're going to go about that endeavor, whether it be the coaching route or the, the ownership route or, you know, front office route or however it may be. We wish you luck in that endeavor and any endeavor that you, you have upon this day forward. Thank you so much, so much for what you've done. Thank you. With that being said, while I'm on here and while I can check, I will let you sports fans know that the Stars and the Wild at the end of two periods are tied at two. So if you're a Mike Madonna fan, if you're a Dallas Stars fan, if you're a hockey fan, if you're just a good all-around person and somebody that likes to see good players do good things and good teams do good things, you're on this Stars team. Because something tells me they're on their way back up. Good luck, Dallas Stars. Well, with that being said, I know it's a little early this week for what we're typically doing, but I'll give you a couple of minutes back this evening. There's not a whole lot of sports news going on. But you remember, there's certain ways that you can get a hold of me. There's certain ways that you can submit your questions. Remember, there's these ways. You can email us all about Sports Zone. All about sports on A L L A B O U T S P O R T S Z O N E at gmail.com. All about sports zone at gmail.com. You can submit questions there. You can submit them via our Facebook page, All About Sports Zone. If you know how to spell All About Sports Zone, Put it into your uh, your search feed on Facebook, and it should be that first one that pops up. Or if you're a friend of mine on, on Facebook, a personal friend of mine, just go to the page and like us and submit your questions that way. Or you can also submit your questions one other way, and that's through Twitter at JimmyCursey1. That's at Twitter, or, or at Jimmy Kersey one on Twitter. Let's do it that way. I thank you so much 
for viewing this week. And look forward to seeing you next week on the Jimmy the K Sports Show. Until next time, peace out. Hasta la vista, baby.